I guess we're on. Okay. Um, this is Roy Jefferson. He's a probation officer with our circuit. And I thought I'd grab him in between court hearings and other jobs he has to talk a little bit about probation and about his evening programs. He, he does two different jobs for us here at the juvenile court. And one he pretty much created himself. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that one too. Let's start with probation. What's your duties here in the circuit and your area of coverage? Okay, so with our duties of, of our court supervision, um, after kids are adjudicated in court, uh, they're, placed, well, they're placed on formal probation that what we call the, or pretty much a court order. So the court order for probation. With that, uh, coordinate their, uh, I set up their community service. So we meet with, meet with the community service supervisor. Um, it's called Operation Payback. Uh, we have a community garden. Um, there also is opportunities for judo program. Um, so pretty much the possibilities are endless for, uh, for the community service. Uh, so we got the community service, uh, coordinate their services that they receive. It could be drug and, al drug and alcohol assessment, it could be uh, count individual counseling. Um, we also provide moral recognition therapy. It's a cognitive behavioral counseling program. It focuses on um, getting a ch trying to change the way they think, and if we can change the way they think, we can change their behavior. Um, also with that, we co uh, coordinate uh, weekly probationary checks. I was checking on the kids every week, making sure they're doing okay, make sure they're attending school, they're not skipping school. How are things going on at home? Um, also with that, we also provide a, a, a drug screen, so we provide a, a, about monthly year analysis, a year analysis, making sure the kids aren't using any drugs if they are. Again, we refer them over to our drug and alcohol assessment. So for the most part, it's just case management, just, um, just make sure you're meeting with your probation uh, caseload, uh, speaking with them, uh, building relationship with the families, making sure you get in contact with the parents. How are things going at home? Uh, is he doing his homework? Is he following the rules at home? Um, anything that you'd like to see? Uh, any, any any other services you'd like to see within the home? So um, pretty much it's just case management. It just depends all upon the individual. Um, just what their parent or their parents feel that they need. What do you think that the, that the children need? And what are things that are that are court ordered um, within their um, treatment plan. How, how do you deal with violations? I'm gonna provide the, the class with a probation or supervision agreement. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a, quite a number of things that kids are supposed to do. Yep. About, 12. Um, about 12 things. Yep. So what, what do you do with the violation? What, what's your response? What do you say to them? What do you mm -hmm. say to their parents? I'll say for the first, for the first violation, uh, usually just do a warning. I send a letter home, let the parents know that their child is in violation. Any further violations to their, um, to their court order could result in um, extra community service work. It could be uh, writing assignments. It could uh, be fees. Uh, that we work through our third millennium classrooms, just depending on what it is with, with our third millennium classrooms. There's a stealing diversion. There's a, um, I think there's a marijuana wise diversion. And so um, I think those do help too. Uh, help tax the parents' pocket a little bit. If the kid's working, you know, make them pay for it. Uh, so we usually send off with a warning letter first. Uh, if they're unresponsive from the first warning letter, then we bring them in, give them some more community service hours. Uh, it's also making sure you get in contact with the parents because sometimes the parents don't even know their kids are violating. Sometimes the school doesn't even send letters home and they know their child is skipping school or just being truant, uh, whatever it may be. So usually do a, um, a warning letter, you do community service work. Uh, we have a graduated sanctions grid and so uh, just based upon um, the child's um, the child's relative risk if it's low, moderate, or high, um, use a grid, they go together and it, and it gives us a list of things. So it could be writing assignment, again, community service, um, or third millennium cl uh, classrooms, again, those were uh, different fees. Um, also, we use more, more recognition therapy as a, um, I guess, as a probation sanction. Uh, whenever it gets to the point where kids are just, repa where just continually, um, uh, they're uh, violating their court orders, uh, we could possibly do a motion to modify and bring the kids back back to court and ask the judge to modify their previous order of disposition. Um, have the kids placed on what's called a state uh, division youth services commitment, 
Uh, for adults, it's most closely to a suspended imposition of sentence, so giving the child one more chance. Um, also, we have home detentions. Uh, we have electronic monitoring, but we usually save the electronic monitoring as our last effort. So we try to exhaust everything else before we get to our electronic monitor. Um, we also have night watch program, so a kid will have a um, do a home detention, explain to the kids that need to be at home at all times. So I usually do this anywhere between 10 or 15 days. Um, have a member from my office go to the home every evening, uh, make sure the child is at home, uh, touch base with the parents or things okay at home. Um, so re really with the sanctions, it's whatever, it's whatever you want to do with it and however you feel that's most appropriate. You, you've had at least one or two this year who have just completely fell off the tracks. Mm -hmm. I mean, just quit doing everything, quit, oh, yes. show, quit showing up, moved, mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. Parents don't know, parents won't let us back in. No. How, how do you deal with that? What, what do you, personally, I don't mean this official mm -hmm. stuff. What? Okay. How do you go home at night knowing this little cat's out there doing whatever he wants? So, so I guess for with parents that are that aren't responsive, and so I guess parents playing a big role or big role too with their kids violating. Um, especially sometimes you may even have to get children, Missouri children, Children's Division involved. And just do a hotline referral and explain the efforts that you're trying to make and the parents are just really not cooperating with you. Um, sometimes I even, I have to even show up after hours. Uh, so I drive by the home, just touch base with the kids, say, hey, I promised you I was coming to see you. And I'm here at the house now. And so uh, whenever it gets to the point where the parents aren't responsive, again, the motion to modify. And then also do your, um, uh, do a hotline and also with children's, children's services, children's division involved. That really gets the parents' attention. The parents get a little agitated because they don't want they. A lot of parents don't want people in their business, and so um, with getting uh, children's division involved, it usually gets the ball rolling a little bit. And even with the threat of them losing their chi uh, losing their children, or them going back to court, and there's more fees associated too. And when we do those motion to modifies, we're usually getting the the child and an attorney. Yes. And because they're looking to change their placement, so yeah. the child's going to have be represented by counsel. So Roy is interacting with a with an attorney at that point yep. and is put on the witness stand at times. Yes, I am. So he has to testify to what he's done, what yep. he hasn't done, and the attorneys, it's an adversarial system, so mm -hmm. they're trying to make us look as bad as possible. Yes, they will. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really important to make sure you, you meet with your kids, you build a relationship with them, and you're actually documenting everything. And so I can't over... Uh, over explain the, uh, the importance of documentation. Yeah, and the case management, like you said, mm -hmm. is extremely important. Very important. Because you don't know which case you're going to end up you don't stuck know. with. No. You just have no idea. Not at all. Okay, let's jump tracks here to Minority Diversion Program. Yep. Uh, when Roy first came to us in 2012, in 2012 yep. we're at three years now. And when he first came to us, we sat around this table with other supervisors and talked about what made him different than other people that we interviewed for the job as a probation officer. And we were thinking at that time about doing some pure diversion work, taking a population of kids, first timers, and completely diverting them from the juvenile system. And Roy came in with an idea. Uh, others didn't come in with ideas. They came in with a degree, maybe a little bit of experience, but Roy had a vision at that time, something that he thought might work, something that had been in his head, something he was passionate about, and we blended that into our minority diversion program. So he's solely responsible for that right now, runs it one evening a week. We run one evening per week. One evening per week, plus some uh, weekend things that come up, plus some trips. So yeah. I'll let him explain what he's trying to do and what it looks like. Yeah, so prior to my involvement with the juvenile office, um, I started doing uh, local outreach uh, through a faith-based community uh, with our uh, Missouri Division of Youth Services, more specifically our Gerardo Center. Uh, so I met with a group of kids every Sunday for about three, about three, three almost four years, just meeting with the kids. What I learned from there, 
Uh, the kids just like having somebody that's showing interest in them. And so just really build, build a relationship with them. And so um, I previously worked at our detention center. Detention center closed due to state budget cuts and, and, and everything else. And then so I was really trying to get into the juvenile office, really, I, uh, really was trying to get into have a, a, I guess a broader uh, impact upon the youth. And so during my interview, um, I was told to, I had to pose a program. Uh, so pro, uh, I guess a court diversion program. And so the, the heart of the court diversion program is mentoring. And so we, we do small group mentoring. Uh, we do it about once per week. So we do an evening session. Well, it's a backup limit. So it's called the My 180 um, Court Diversion Program. And so and the question is, what's, the, what's your 180? And so with the kids, um, it's really helping the kids understand for them to take ownership of their 180, of their turnaround, so to speak. Um, and so we meet, so the duration of the, the diversion relationship uh, it's, a, it's six months, so it's roughly 180 days. And so it's really these kids 180 days to make their turnaround. Uh, and so from there, uh, we do life skills curriculum. And so we use uh, rites of passage just through uh, the, uh, I think it's the, uh, it's the same company that does the Girl Circle. So I'm thinking it's the, uh, the Circle Foundation, I believe it's the name, the Circle Foundation. So we do life skills curriculum. We also provide, uh, through the juvenile office, we're able to provide family coaching. To for some of the parents, uh, some kids, if they if uh, if there's a strong history, just just being defined in the home, issues in school. Sometimes I pull those kids in the MRT too. Has been uh, also shown to be very effective with the kids as well. So we got the family coaching. We do the MRT. Sometimes we may do a community service work with the kids, and so we probably give them maybe some low hours, anywhere between five to ten hours of community service, uh, and also we try to provide. Uh, uh, academic tutoring, so helping the kids with their work, with their school work. A lot of schools don't provide after school tutoring, um, even during the summer, during the summertime. Uh, just a lot of schools sometimes, I think they kind of fail our kids and not making sure that they're, uh, that they're getting the help, necessary help with their homework. Um, so pretty much the program just kind of, it, it just, it just kind of just, it uh, just came out of a, of a personal desire to really make an impact with youth. Um, just really with the, with the mentoring. Um, How many kids so far? Through the through the diversion, through the diversion. program. I think we've uh, well we screened about a hundred and twenty referrals, and out of a hundred and twenty referrals, I think we've probably had maybe roughly about fifty to sixty sixty kids go through the diversion program. Our stats so far. Uh, with the diversion program, successful completion, well, I'm sorry, how the diversion program works, uh, it's a first-time minority male offenders, and so the referral comes in, if it's, if it's their first referral, they're a minority male, it goes, it gets uh, diverted to our diversion program. From there, um, uh, I set up a meeting, so I set up a court diversion conference, I send a letter home, I already set the date, it makes it a little easier for the parents to, uh, it helps the parents feel like there's a sense of urgency. So they'll either call immediately or they just show up and say, hey, Roy, maybe this date won't work. Well, yes, where I will be there for that day. We set set up the date. We have our diversion conference. We'll discuss the referral, uh, whatever happened. Well, we'll discuss the referral. And then from there, if the parents are, in, are, are on, on board with the diversion program, if the, if the, if the juvenile's willing to accept, yes, I made these mistakes, uh, then we pr proceed with diversion. Now, if the juvenile says, no, I didn't do it, didn't, you know, I'm not saying anything to you, then those referrals aren't diverted, they go straight back to the juvenile office and they go either they go to our formal adjustment uh, with our formal department or if, they, if, if need be, they can go to court for trial. Um, so if they agree to the diversion program, then I establish some guidelines, recommendations. Uh, for the most part, the guidelines is, you know, just have no contact with, uh, with any, I guess you can say co-defendants, anyone else that they've been in trouble with. Let's say they're out burglarizing some homes, we're out stealing together, make sure the kids don't have any contact with those. Make sure, um, all, another condition would be um, no drug use, no alcohol, no tobacco. Um, they get curfew. Uh, make sure they attend school every day. Uh, they're, fo they're following the rules at school, just being cooperative. Uh, and so from there, uh, if they agree to the diversion program, they sign a diversion contract. Diversion program starts. Uh, may I try to make contact about, I try to do once a week. Uh, just if I, I was doing once per month and it was a little hard to try to build a relationship with the kids, sometimes they forget about the program, sometimes the parents may forget. So I make sure I try to see the kids on a regular basis. So I try to stop by every week 
Uh, usually stop between passing periods to talk to the kids how are things going, things are going fine. And then from there we have our weekly meetings. And so we have our uh, divert, we have our life skills curriculum where we meet in the evening. Uh, so we meet about once per week, we pick the kids up in the big van, we bring, bring them here. We have snacks for the kids, sometimes they're hungry after school. So they eat their snacks, we go through the curriculum, uh, talk to them how are things going in school, anybody need help with homework, so we talk about homework help. And then also during the summertime, we apply for, uh, for grants. And during the summertime, we try to set up six big, big events. During the summertime, a lot of kids have a lot of uh, extra free time. So a lot of smaller events, we either do, we try to do a basketball once per month, so as I hoop it up. If the kids like basketball, play basketball. If they want to play football, they play flag football. We try to, we try to accommodate what they want to do. We try to set up uh, three big trips. I uh, usually go to Memphis every summer, go to Civil Rights Museum. I think it's really important, just uh, what we're working with African American youth is making sure they understand, hey, a lot of people have paved the, uh, have really paved the way for us and with our civil liberties. It's really helping the kids understand that um, not to take advantage of the rights, of the, the liberties that they have today that other generations didn't have. Uh, so from there they go, we have barbecue, they, they go go-kart racing, go to St. Louis, we have the Civil War Museum, that was pretty nice. Just seeing the grounds, uh, just try to find some fun activities, some things that kids that, that'll be memorable for them. And so they'll tie to the diversion experience and the things they learn with the fun activities. And, uh, and we even would even build a relationship with, with the staff and with other mentors that, uh, that volunteer with us, just trying to make a lasting impression upon the youth. Roy, the reason that it was set up to begin with, the minority diversion program, was because our circuit has a disproportionality of minority numbers coming in being referred and referred is just a polite word for being arrested mm -hmm. or being or being sent to us from a school district yep. saying this kid is not behaving this is a this is a bad report that yep. we're getting it's a behavioral report from the school so ar around the table here is there any discussion at all about that disproportionality or about the the racial issues at school, is that some of the discussion that happens either here or on the bus or when amongst you're at? Amongst the youth? Or? Yeah, amongst the youth, amongst the staff. How, how do you deal with that when they're saying, you know, this this is, something's been unfair, this was handled unfair, maybe mm -hmm. handled like this because I was black, the, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. What do you, what are you kind of doing with that? Okay, with it for I guess for parents expressing that or either parents or the kid at all. Haven't really heard that heard it much. I know since we started diversion program, uh, the relative rate index has went down. I think maybe about a, uh, about about uh, I think it's about about one percent I believe. Uh, but really haven't heard too much. You know, much complaint. Um, but definitely outside in larger metropolitan areas, we're talking to others about what I do, uh, that's a big question. You know, and that's what I said, is there an issue? Um, but uh, I'm sure there is an issue. You know, anytime when you, uh, when I go visit the kids at school and say, oh, your kid's in ISS, and you go in the ISS room, you know, it's mo majority, you know, it's African-American youth in, in, in the ISS classroom, in, in I, I, ISS classroom, in the front offices, especially when um, African-Americans make up maybe less than 11%, maybe 10% of the right. community. And we, we see that with our suspension classroom too. Mm -hmm. You know, I keep the stats on that every year and it's, you know, with what you said, 11% African American youth and in a suspension classroom we're about 80 to 85%. Oh yes. And so, you know, the juvenile office is doing what we can, yeah. but yet it's the referral agencies, the schools and the law enforcement mm -hmm. that really need to get their stuff together. Yeah. You know, they need to figure more of this out, need to have some of their own programs, yep. their own cultural diversity yep. programs, that kind of stuff. Yep. And diversion so. programs working too. Um, successful completion of diversion program means there's no more referrals during, during the course of the six months. And, it's, well, successful diversion would be no referrals in six months through a diversion, doing, through, I'm sorry, during the duration of the program. Uh, so far, 85% of the kids successfully completed, meaning that there's no more referrals. And then we only we had about maybe about 10 to 11% of youth who participate in the diversion program. They, uh, they uh, I guess, well, so to speak, they failed. Uh, so they got another referral within six months, and then from there, and so it, um, for those that did fail, their first uh, divert, their first, I'm sorry, their referring 
The first referral is diverted, but the second one is passed on to the juvenile office. And then we've only had about, I think about four or five percent of the youth uh, that were on the diversion program made, uh, they, refer, they, uh, they uh, offended so hard again afterwards that they were placed on formal, court, uh, formal probation. Great stats. I mean, those stats are better than any other program that we have. So those are st statistics to be proud of. They're actual numbers. They're actual kids. And the ones that you impact, it's so important because their record does not go in the juvenile system. It's not in the computer, it, what's called the juvenile information system in Missouri. It doesn't exist. It's not a statistic in there. Nope. And so even the ones that fail, when they come to us, they're coming to us with one referral. The yep. first diversion one doesn't count. Nope. And uh, great program, great ideas, and, and it's one we would eventually like to sell into the community and have a community agency do it rather than us. Yep. And that's not a pipe dream because we started the alternative schools from here that were serving kids back in the 90s to attend school who weren't in school, they were just on the street, and gradually build it up until the school district took it over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have high hopes this one will come into another agency and Roy can sell it nationwide. I'm so, ready. Yeah, he's ready to go. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for your time, Roy. No Appreciate problem. it. Thank you.